So our regular weekly updates um, about AI, June 14th. And uh, this week, the main event was, uh, of course, uh, Apple AI, which is not artificial intelligence. This is Apple intelligence. So they <laughs> um, created this new whatever. So um, every June, we have uh, a worldwide developers conference, uh, WWDC. And uh, usually they talk about new software, new features, new operating system. And this time it was, well, at least the first day was completely all about AI. And they made a lot of announcements, a uh, major partnership with uh, OpenAI. Uh, Open uh, I'll, I'll go through them, but they're not available right away. Uh, they will be available only in the fall and only in beta for beta testing. Uh, but overall, it's uh, very exciting. Um, what they're doing is kind of similar to what Microsoft Windows are doing, right? But uh, so it's uh, context sensitive. So uh, AI knows what you're doing and can answer questions. Uh, whether you are writing something in the editor or it's email or you're browsing something. So it is uh, context aware. Uh, First concern, of course, the privacy and security, and they're very serious about addressing that. Um, acceptance is pretty good. Uh, so people, people really liked it. Uh, but again, we will see in the fall when they will start rolling it out. So one of the first things they did is uh, Siri. So Siri is uh, a, a talking assistant, and uh, it existed for a long, long, long time. I never use it. But now it is uh, much smarter. And uh, what's interesting how it works, for simple question, it can answer on the device. For more complex questions, it can go on the cloud. And there is uh, like a private uh, cloud uh, just for you. And then for more complex questions, it may decide to go to ChatGPT, but um, it may ask you permission to do that. So this is uh, Siri. So yes, you know, ChatGPT is pretty smart. So now Siri will become smarter too. And uh, uh, on-screen awareness, right? So uh, next, uh, writing tools built to, into applications like mail, messages, notes, um, help you to generate and edit the text. Uh, mail will utilize AI to better organize and surface content in inboxes, notes, and phone audio transcription, summarization, AI crafted uh, gen modules and uh, image playground. So this is working with the images, uh, photos, conversational search, ability to create photo stories, new editing tools, and a lot of concern about uh, privacy. So there was a huge number of videos and discussions uh, about this, uh, these announcements. Great, so this is the main uh, event of the week. Uh, Elon Musk uh, tweeted that uh, X, which is former Twitter, is now number one news app in 143 countries worldwide on App Store. So yeah, this, this is something. I, frankly, I use Twitter all the time. Uh, before uh, Musk took over Twitter, I didn't use it, but now it just became my favorite app. Uh, so yeah, I, I believe this is true. Uh, billionaire Peter Thiel says that AI boom will make society favor people with strong verbal skills, not math skills. Just interesting observation. Jan Lecun, the beginning of a sigmoid looks like an exponential. So this is the tweet. So the sigmoid curve it, uh, starts and then it kind of plateaus, right? And the exponential growth is a sequence of multiple sigmoids. And what's happening uh, what uh, he, he wrote in his tweet that no physical process can grow indefinitely. Uh, for example, Moore's law, uh, what's happening is changing uh, paradigms, uh, changing technologies. And Moore's law is now going for seven decades. And uh, uh, so each particular technology saturates, goes to plateau, but then the te uh, next technology uh, takes over and so on, so on. Uh, so. We haven't seen similar paradigm shifts in, say, airplane speed or space travel. Technological paradigm shifts require scientific breakthroughs. Okay, next is um, Arc Browser. 
So th this is interesting. This is a company here in New York, specifically in Brooklyn, and uh, it existed for uh, last five years. And they create a browser, which is uh, first of all, it is AI first browser. Uh, so it uses AI. Second, what I really like about it, it allows you to organize your tabs. They have this idea of spaces. And uh, uh, it, it's, very, it's very close uh, to, to Chrome. It, it allows you to, to use uh, similar applications. Uh, you know, many people open so many tabs on the, on the top of a regular Chrome browser, and then they don't remember what is where so th th this would probably re really help i recommend you to to try so th these are some links uh, arc.net the browser.company and so on there's a youtube video uh, uh, three types of models uh, base text llms instruct llms and chat llms so base text LLMs are trained on pieces of text and uh, what they're doing is predicting next word. So the uh, training data consists of pieces of text and uh, you can take a piece of text and then predict uh, uh, how to continue this text. That's what base models uh, train to do. Instruct LLMs are trained on pairs like instruction and output or question and answer. And these type of models are much better on creating specific output, uh, generating summaries, translating text. Translation is a clear example. You have uh, one part in, let's say, English and another part in French, right? So, and you convert one to another. In writing code, uh, calling functions, uh, they're generally more reliable and controllable because of the way they are trained. And then there are chat LLMs, and they are trained on dialogues. So user assistant, user assistant, user assistant. Uh, so they fine tune to generate responses that are relevant, coherent, engaging. Chat LLMs are often used in chatbots, virtual assistants, other applications where natural language interaction is required. They are typically more conversational and empathetic than instruct uh, LLMs. So depending on your use case, uh, you probably will be using either instruct model or chat model. Uh, now, when you're giving the prompt, uh, usually what happens, the LLM receives uh, three pieces. It receives your message, which is the human message, but it also receives a system message, which is usually hidden, you don't see it. And it also history aware. So if you asked several questions in succession, it remembers what you have asked before, right? So system message uh, tells uh, large language model general rules of the game. Uh, so for example, if you're creating an agent, you may have an agent which is a writer and another agent which is an editor and another agent which is, I don't know, supervisor and so on. So system message will contain the the rules uh, how this agent should behave then it receives the message and then receives the history uh, then th th this this is example how you send message uh, using langchain framework and you see you you create a system message explicitly so in this case you see it of course you create it and then you message uh, your human message and then you you combine them together when you're sending them and you can also add history on top of that okay uh next is some miscellaneous news uh, statistics about open ai it grew to 3.4 billion annually in revenues which is more than doubled in just one year uh, Meta is upgrading data centers, scaling to 600,000 GPUs, which is quite amazing number. Uh, but this is, of course, the, the goal. Uh, Microsoft is partnering uh, with a lot of companies, uh, AI startups. Um, one of the big thing is that they invested 1.5 billion into G42. So what is G42? Well, it's, uh, it's a holding company. It's an investment company. They have 22,000 people. Uh, they exist for six years uh, they're in um, united arab emirates and they do a lot of ai research and uh, funding and uh, 
w one important thing is Inception Institute of Artificial Intelligence, AI, AI. So it is also under them. And now they are partnering with uh, Microsoft. OpenAI is adding former NSA head and retired general Paul uh, Nakazon to its board of directors and to its safety and security commitment. So OpenAI now is uh, like, I guess, following the government guidelines and uh, connecting with military, interesting. Jan Goodfellow, uh, just a reminder, Jan Goodfellow is originally coming from Canada. He is original author of uh, uh, GANs, Generative Adversarial Networks, and uh, uh, author of the uh, Deep Learning book. Uh, which is, uh, anyway, so now he's working in, in Google DeepMind in a, comp in a group which is solving nuclear fusion uh, power generation. So they're trying to use AI to optimize the process of nuclear fusion. Very interesting and challenging work. Magnific.ai, so this is the website. And uh, so th what they're doing, they're upscaling images using AI. So suppose you have image quality like this, and then this part was upscaled uh, using their software. You see huge difference, right? So yes, they're generating the pixels, they're in inventing. So, uh, but yeah, the, this, this is beautiful. I think this is very useful. Okay, uh, next, uh, Sakana.ai. Okay, okay. Th th this is interesting. So question is, uh, if LLM can help uh, to invent better ways to train LLMs. And here they are talking about uh, preference optimization schemes. So what is it? Uh, you've heard about reinforcement learning from human feedback, right? So when uh, this was the original approach, uh, when a network was trained to predict uh, how humans will like or don't like a LLM response. And this uh, feedback from this network was used to uh, correct training of, of the model. Then uh, people started using DPO, which is more direct approach, direct response optimization, and so on. There, there are multiple schemes on how to do this um, human preference optimization. And um, what they did, and uh, this is the link to the, the publication, they actually generate the code, the logic of this process, automatically. So, so it looks like this. So uh, this code is actually generated by LLM to be, become part of the training and they improve and improve to, to make it better. So the future, a fully automated AI researcher that open endlessly improve itself. So they call it LLM squared. So it's a uh, very interesting work. Uh, okay, some other news. Uh, Elon Musk has dropped his lawsuit against OpenAI without any explanations. Uh, so this is the link. Uh, at the same time, is, is, he's now sued <laughs> by tes Tesla investors for creating uh, uh, X uh, AI artificial intelligence company because, uh, well, they thought that uh, they invested in Tesla because they thought Tesla will be developing this. Um, anyway, uh, Samsung Electronics uh, getting into AI game. They are uh, announcing two new chips using two nanometer and four nanometer processes, and they're creating new AI service. Uh, th this is just early announcements. AI Steve, this is uh, in uh, England, uh, so you, so this is AI which is running for UK Parliament. Uh, he is represented by a business person, by a human, uh, Steve uh, Endicott. And uh, if this AI will win the place in Parliament, so then, yeah, we'll have an AI politician, well, with a human representative. So it's uh, in interesting. Uh, um, Andrew Eng uh, from deeplearning.ai, yet another course, uh, like how to create a database agent. So this is when you talk to the system in human language and it converts it into SQL. So this is a course how to do that. Uh, GPT-4 is smarter at temperatures, uh, at a high, higher temperatures, even on deterministic uh, tasks. So when you're running the model, there is a parameter called temperature. And usually people set it uh, to low level, close to zero. Uh, but uh, what, okay, I didn't provide the link, uh, but yeah, this is interesting observation by uh, giving it more randomness, you actually make it smarter. 
So temperature defines the randomness. Uh, like when 72B, uh, which we spoke about it last week, uh, now it is the best performing open source model uh, on different leaderboards. Okay, Luma Dream Machine. So this is lumalabs.ai and they created software. So you give a short prompt, describe uh, the video and it generates uh, the video for you. And you can test it, uh, I guess, on this website. Uh, Stable Diffusion uh, released uh, the weights for the version 3 uh, model. And uh, yeah, so it's a 2 billion parameter model. Uh, it's efficient, it's good. Uh, next is uh, combining uh, multiple LLMs through a mixture of agents uh, outperforms GPT-4.0. So th this is the research work. Th this is not uh, like production system, but still, uh, it's very interesting. So you can, by combining several models, you can outperform the top, uh, the, the champion. Uh, again we need to follow the continuation of this because this is very interesting so it's on archive and it's on hugging face and you can read the details okay uh, an empirical study of mamba based uh, language models um, there were jamba and zamba and now yet another publication and the idea is that mixing mamba and transformer blocks together so you have a hybrid model it, it actually outperforms uh, both original models, uh, Mamba and Transformer. So you can see it uh, here, how it uh, outperforms. Mistral, the French company, uh, for their one year anniversary, they got even more money, uh, 600 million euros. It's a S Series B funding. So of course, this was a huge success. Uh, next is uh, uh, Crowdsource Arena leaderboard. Uh, so these are English only queries uh, on, on this leaderboard. So you see on the top, we have GPT-4.0, which is Omnimodal, which was recently introduced. And you see on the top, you mostly have proprietary models. The green means it's uh, uh, open, open source uh, model. So we have Llama 370B Instruct is uh, the top performing one. And then here we have Quen 272B, right? And, the, and then some other, some other models. But, but look, these are all very good performing models because here, for example, we see three, uh, Claude 3 Sonnet. Here we see GPT-4 and another GPT-4, right? And Mistral Large, which, uh, well, in December, it was considered to be like really, really good. Uh, Mistral 822B is here and smaller Mistrals and Mistrals uh, didn't even get into like uh, uh, this. Anyway, uh, so yeah, Llama 370B is good and Gwen 272B. Okay, uh, next is uh, tech layoffs. Uh, I always show it uh, and you see the number of layoffs is much smaller than last year. And uh, this is me as usual, and thank you.